Our presider this morning is Father Delphin. Please stand. The shepherd candle or the candle of joy. Like the shepherds it kept the night watch over their flock, let us keep watch in joyful anticipation of the Lord's coming. Let us pray. Father, at the height of our Advent hope, we rely the candles of hope. And peace, of joy. Grant us the grace to experience joy in hope of the Savior's coming, joy in the face of apathy, joy in the face of sorrow, and joy in the face of uncertainty. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. My dear sisters and brothers, today, the third Sunday of Advent, is what we call now Death Sunday. St. Paul invites us to rejoice and remove from our hearts all our insights. For the Lord is near. The prophet Isaiah tells us that the Lord is about to perform wonderful things for all those who are afflicted in a way. And in the gospel, Jesus reassures John the Baptist and us that he is indeed the expected Messiah, for he has been performing the works of healing and liberation that the prophet Isaiah had announced. This word or the wonders the Lord will do also for us this coming Christmas by bringing about in us the radical renewal we are yearning for. And so as we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ, let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for pardon this plan.
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully obey the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to obtain the joys of so great a salvation, and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and blood rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And let us open this Mass for the healing of Deborah Hill, Patricia Estevar, Marcelina Alcaraz and Eddie Nail. And in thanksgiving of Mary Jordi Tomaka, and for the souls of Vernon de Sousa, Alfred Rafa, and Jovi Baldini. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. <coughs> then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion, singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Savior, who has come, who is present, and who will promise to return. Isaiah, in the first reading, talks about the joy that is the images that he, that he sees. He talks about the land that is no longer a desert, the parched land, which is no longer parched or dry, and the barren land, or the staff, is no longer barren. 
But there's also where there is no joy, and everything is quite the opposite. Life is, is without joy. It is like the desert. It's like the barren land. It's like the parched land. And life without joy is also like eyes that are blind, ears that are deaf, as well as knees or legs that are lame. We might have forgotten to, to tell St. John the Baptist today about the fact that it is Gaudete Sunday. Because in the Gospel today, we don't have that sense of joy that we hear from him. At this time, if you didn't know, John is now in prison. He was in prison because he had spoken out against the leader of the government. And he, he actually, you know, kind of take, took him out and said, hey, you know, what about marriage? What about spousal fidelity? And that's something that he stood up against and he was in prison because of that. While in prison, I don't know how long he was there, but during this time, he started to lose hope. He started to, to lose um, his belief. You know, he started to lose his joy. And so he started to have doubts about who Jesus was. Remember, a little earlier, John had baptized Jesus in Jordan, and he's the one that's going around proclaiming that he is the one that is to come. But now, he's having some doubts about whether that is true or not. And so, he sent his followers, his faithful followers, to Jesus to ask him if he is indeed that one person that he had been proclaiming. Jesus didn't exactly answer the question that his followers posed to him. Instead, he told them to go ahead and observe what he had done miracles and the healings and all of that. But at the same time, he also praised John for his role in preparing the way for him, as how it had been prophesied. Jesus also concluded by saying that all who work for the kingdom of God shall be like John or shall be greater than John. God wants all of us to have joy in our life. As a matter of fact, he wants us, our lives to be over, over flooded with, with um, joy. But sometimes, you know, it's hard for us to rejoice or be happy, especially when we look at the state of our household, look at how our community is, look at how the world is today. It's hard to be happy sometimes when we see a lot of bad things happening out in the world. Things like racism, <coughs> gun violence, polarization, pandemic, ignorance, climate changes, addictions, poverty, homelessness, divisions among families, addictions, abuses, and the list goes on and on. God is not telling us that we have to be joyful and happy and that all of these things do not exist. Rather, or even, you know, that we kind of ignore that these things are even there by putting our heads in the sand and thinking that it all go away. But rather, he's telling us that we can make a difference, that we can make changes, we can make things better with the gifts that we have, our talents, our treasures, and also our time. Like John, sometimes we can be stuck between a rock and a hard place as well, as like he is in prison. And we can very well send messengers to Jesus. And I'm sure Jesus would probably tell us the same answers as he gave to the followers of John. If we were to look and he would say, look around and see that God's presence is there. We do see eyes that are open that can see. We do see ears that can hear. We do see the lame walking. We do see lepers cured. We do see the deaf hearing. And this is all because of technology and because of all the things that we have in today's world, that all that happens. These are the physical aspects of everything. But we may not be able to affect any of those, those aspects, but we do have the ability to affect the spiritual aspects of life. So our job is to guide and to teach others spiritually. We need to be patient, as how Isaiah tells, or James tells us in the second reading. We need to be trust, trusting, we need to continue to pray, we need to not lose faith in Jesus, because he's always there to lift, lift us up, when we're down, it's always there next to us, regardless of whether things are going well or things are not going well. So 
keep trusting in Jesus. Sometimes, too, we have our own blindness, our own lameness, our own leprosy, our own deafness, and ailments that may prevent us from rejoicing. May God strengthen us and make our hands that are feeble, our knees that are weak, and our hearts that are frightened, anything that can prevent us from being joyful and restore that joy into our lives, into our families, into our relationships, into our workplace, in our, and into our future. May our joy, may your joy be our strength. We ask this through Christ our Lord today. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Please rise and let us profess our I believe in one God.
Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, O Lord, we pray, be offered to you accessibly to complete what was begun in sacred history and powerfully accomplished for us, your saving Lord. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For he has come at his first coming. The loneliness of human flesh. And so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last may manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hold. And so with angels are and angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven. We sing the hymn of your glory, our spirit of them, we acclaim. Accountable holiness. May it monitor for these gifts, we pray, by sending doctors, spirit upon them like the people, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the time of us betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks, broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the Mr. Queen.
my dear sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who to the suffer of the Lamb. Lord, to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine assistance may bless us of our focus and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Please pray, say that for some of us. Santa, the Knights of Columbus will be hosting their annual breakfast this Sunday, today, after this Mass, at 10 a.m. Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mass will be held in the church on Monday, December 12th, for the celebration of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Following the Mass, we will have a reception in the Monsignor Leo Moore Hall. Receiving the Faith Advent Recollection. We invite you to join us on December the 16th at 5 p.m. for an evening of reflection as we await the joyful season of Christmas. We have a guest speaker who will share with us the meaning of Advent and will help us revive our faith. Advent Penance Service. After the Advent reflection at approximately 7 p.m., there will be a communal penance service. There will be several priests from our deanery in attendance. Family Mass. Our monthly Mass will be Sunday the 18th at the 12 p.m. Mass. If you have taken a tag from the Christmas tree, please drop it off the gift by Friday, December the 16th. Thank you. With the brothers and sisters, I just want to, uh, you know, the facades. Especially for tomorrow, it's a great feast of uh, the church, the universe. It's the feast day of our Lady of uh, Guadalupe. If you recall, last part of December, the Yosisan Level celebrated the uh, feast of the Guadalupe. And so we are all encouraged to celebrate tomorrow here at St. Bernard. Invite your family and friends, okay? So it's a big celebration in the whole uh, church. And then, to also follow up and encourage you, please say in your calendar, this coming Friday, December 16th, as you guys just have heard about the announcement. So in preparation for our Lord Jesus Christ and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, one of the activities of our church, St. Bernard, is to have this Advent recollection. You know, you can come, invite your family and friends, and let us listen to this uh, talk about Advent, so that we can really prepare ourselves for the coming of our Lord Jesus. And the more we welcome the Lord Jesus, when we open our hearts and minds after that talk, you know, maybe a short break, and then we have the so-called penance service. Right? It is good to get rid of all our sins or whatever we have in our hearts, so that we can really welcome the Lord in our hearts. Okay? By doing a good confession. And you heard, several priests will come. It's not only by face, right? You can see other faces of the priests. I would like to see you on the 16th of December, this Friday. You know, when I see your face, I will be happy. Please okay. <laughs> rise for our final blessing. The Lord be with you. Please bow for the final blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of His only begotten Son, and yearn for His coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with His blessing, now and forever. Amen. As you run the race in this present life, May he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity, now and forever. Amen. So that rejoicing now with the devotion and the Redeemer is coming in the flesh, 
You may be endowed with a rich reward of eternal life when He comes again in majesty, now and forever. Amen. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You Christmas celebrations ended. Go forth to glorify the Lord in your life. Then is be to God. And one more thing, as you go out, annual breakfast. Please join us in our breakfast. Breakfast with Santa. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, enjoy your day and happy Sunday. Come on. <laughs>